year I visited the biggest antique store in Sydney. It's called Mitchell Road Antiques and I went with my friends Millie, Tiasha and Caitlin. That place is insane. There is so much to look at and you really need to set aside an entire day to go. I didn't realise that at the time. When I visited the first time, I thought, oh yeah, an hour or two, that'll be enough. That was not enough. So, if any of you watched this video here that I posted last year, you might remember that there were some really amazing items I pointed out in that video that I said that I loved, but I couldn't quite justify buying them at the time. I did end up going back, and in today's video you're going to see some footage that I shot when I went there the second time. I set aside a full day for my second visit, and it really paid off because I found so many things that I wouldn't have seen if I just hurried through. The thing about antique stores that are that big with that much stock is that it's very, very easy to miss things. There's so many things on top of each other, underneath each other, around each other. There were items I didn't see the first time that I went, but when I saw them on my second trip, I knew I had to have them. Now, there's a fun little game that I like to play with myself every Christmas. At some point throughout the year, if I see something that I really, really like, but it's quite pricey and I can't really justify buying it, I say to myself, you know what, I could buy this as a Christmas present for myself and I will purchase the item and I will lock it away and I will not look at it again until Christmas. So that is exactly what I did last year. It's been exactly one year since I bought these items. Before I open this box and I show you guys what I bought, I'm gonna put on some lo-fi beats and show you guys a tour of Mitchell Road Antiques.
All right, so now that we've had a look at the store, I'm so excited to finally have a look at what I got. There are some items in here I definitely remember because I've been looking forward to opening them for the past 12 months. But there's other things that I may have bought impulsively that I don't actually remember buying. So this is as much of a surprise for me as it is for you. So first up, this is a lampshade that is part of an antique Murano glass lamp that I got. It's a beautiful lampshade. I think that these lamps are from the 60s because I saw them on a vintage website once and the listing said that it was from around the 60s. So that's the lampshade for the lamp that's hiding in here somewhere. I got this skirt, which is so beautiful. This doesn't have any tag, no label, nothing, no information, but it feels to me like it's made of wool. It was in a vintage section of the antique store. Whether or not it is vintage, I, I don't entirely know. Next, this feels like a platter. Ah-ha! Oh, long time no see, my old friend. I had forgotten how big this was. This is the blue and gold mirrored platter. And funnily enough, the theme of my house wasn't blue and gold when I last went to this antique store, but it is now. Big thanks to my past self for getting something that matches my new aesthetic perfectly. <laughs> blue and gold. What? I wonder if subconsciously I have ended up styling my house in a blue and gold theme because I bought so much of it in the past and I just had it all lying around and uh, it just made sense to use it all as my new style. On the bottom here it says hand decorated. Charles Ware. I'm definitely going to have to research some of the brands of the things that I've thrifted over the years because Sometimes people pop into my comment section and say, Alex, that thing that you got when you were thrifting is so rare, it's worth thousands of dollars. And here I am, I've got no idea, I'm just spray painting it for fun. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to do some Googling and look into this child's wear. But uh, no worries, my little friend, you are not at risk of being spray painted. <laughs> this is very heavy. Oh my God, I completely forgot about this. This is actually a olive oil and vinegar bottle. This is so beautiful. So this is hand blown glass. We've got a stopper here and a stopper here so that you can keep balsamic vinegar and olive oil in this. It has this little metal kind of hook thing hanging off it here that someone's fashioned and I, I guess maybe they used to have that hanging in their kitchen. I might get Sam to build me a timber stand for it because I really don't like the idea of hanging it. I think it's too precious and I really don't want to risk it breaking. Oh. this. In last year's Thriftmas, I kept finding these absolutely incredible onyx pieces. I currently have two very tall onyx vases that I use for propagations. And this one, I love the shape of it. This urn shape is so beautiful. Ugh. Another blue thing. So this is very strange. This is a glass light fitting. It didn't come with any other pieces or parts. This is a hanging light shade and I believe that you're supposed to attach it to a single light bulb that is hanging out of the ceiling. So I was thinking of repurposing it somehow. I wouldn't mind getting Sam to build some little legs for it that could kind of sit like there and there, for example. 
and I could use it like a vase. It's just such a beautiful piece of glass. I couldn't leave the store without it. And uh, little did I know that the theme of my house was going to end up blue and gold. So that's a great success too. <gasps> This. this is incredible. This is hand blown glass. This is again a vase that you use for like a single flower or a couple of flowers on their stems. This is so insane. It's black glass and then in here it's iridescent. Isn't that magical? This is just so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh my god! Okay, who remembers this? This is a little perfume bottle. I showed this in my last video. Isn't this insane? It's so beautiful. That's the little stopper and I believe that you would fill this with perfume and when you're ready to actually use the perfume, you just give it a tip, you douse the applicator and then you would put the perfume on like this. This is such a unique piece. I've never seen anything like this before. When I went back for this, I couldn't find it and I thought someone must have bought it, but it had actually just completely moved. The entire stall where this was being sold had just up and moved to another section of the store and I was gutted that I couldn't find it. But because I went there for such a long time and I took my time to walk around, I did end up finding the store's new location and I was so happy, but I had completely forgotten that I actually managed to get this. This is just so cute. Oh, this is heavy, what on earth? Oh, this is the lamp for the lampshade. So this is a Murano glass ball. The cool thing about this is that after I ended up buying it, a couple of days later, a vintage store that I follow on Instagram listed one identical to this. And the crazy thing is they sold it for $800. From memory, I think it was about $100. It could possibly have been $200, but I remember at the time thinking, well, because it works, and it's vintage Murano glass, and it really is a collector's piece. I'll go ahead and buy it. And then when I saw it listed on that vintage store, and I saw that someone actually bought one of these for 800 US dollars, I was like, well, not a bad investment on my part, getting this for under 200. Oh, I remember what this is just by feeling it. This is another glass lampshade. I got this from the same store that I got this one from. This pastel colored glass is a dream. But this is another one that I would love to try to repurpose. I may just get like a clear glass jar and sit it in the bottom filled with water. I can treat this almost like a vase. I could have the thing sitting in the base that's got the water and I can have the flowers and everything coming out the top. I think that that's going to suit me much better than trying to use this as a lampshade. Oh boy. Ugh. Oh, I think I know what this is. From the feel of how heavy it is and the feel of the shape, I think this is an incredible vase. Ah, yes! Yay! Oh, this is what I was so excited to open. This was the thing that made it so hard for me to leave this box of antiques untouched because this is one of two vases that I got. Yes. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look, look at this. My absolute favorite find. So these are from Sweden. The brand is Costa Boda, handmade in Sweden. These two matching vases. They are the most beautiful glass. The little white one has flecks of speckled blue in it. The purple one is just the most beautiful shade. Look at these colors together. Look at that. Is that not absolutely insane? Oh, hang on a second. Have I forgotten something? I think I have. Did I really get... <gasps> They are truly magnificent. <laughs> From memory, they were the most expensive things that I got at the store, but I will treasure them forever, so I don't mind. Oh. <gasps> ah! <laughs> this one, I showed this in my first video, and people were like, Alex, you gotta go back for it. I remember it was quite expensive, and that's why I didn't buy it the first time, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. So glad I went back. Look at this, isn't it stunning? It's white and speckled gold, hand-blown glass. It's so beautiful. This is incredible. I'm so happy about this. Oh, okay, right, right. I, you know what? I got this because I was so into the whole Murano glass thing last year. 
Now I'm being a lot more specific about what I buy to style my house with and because this is red and gold, this to me, this is good for Christmas, yes, but any other time of the year I would probably have this hidden away, which is a real shame because it's so beautiful. So I may actually gift this to someone that can use it all year round and love it. I think it may be a tea light holder. I don't think it's a vase. This is the only thing so far that I look back and I kind of regret buying it. And finally, the very last item, which feels to me like a swan. I think it is. I think, oh, it is. buy this. I couldn't remember if I bought this or not. This is a planter, a swan shaped planter. And once again, blue fits in perfectly with the theme of my house. Oh, I'm so glad I got this. This is in desperate need of a clean. It's filthy, like in between its feathers is really, really dirty. So I'm gonna have to do some research on how to clean this old sort of porcelain. It's got no markings on it. it. Doesn't say where it's made, how old it is or anything. This one is going to be very well loved in my house. So that's it for today. Keep an eye out for a video I have coming up where I'm going to be styling thrifted items and antique items in my house. So you guys can see what I actually end up doing with these things. If you have any suggestions for any of them, leave them in the comments down below. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah!